This video will teach you the four quickest ways to build wealth. The most basic rules of building wealth are to spend less than you earn and never borrow to pay for anything that decreases in value, including cars, furniture, appliances, and renovations. Another way to build wealth is to avoid borrowing to pay for things without monetary value, such as living expenses or holidays. You should only borrow to buy assets that increase in value at a higher rate than the interest rate on the loan or that you use to generate business or investment income over the interest paid. These rules will help you build wealth over time. However, if you combine the four strategies in this video, you will build wealth quicker than you ever thought. Number one, maintain an emergency cash fund. Having an emergency fund ensures you don't get into debt each time something unexpected happens that affects your finances. Many people seem to spend their entire lives struggling from one money crisis to the next, never getting out of debt and never being in control. Having an emergency fund can help you avoid this kind of life. Everybody should have an emergency cash fund ready for when it is needed in real emergencies, for example. When the fridge needs replacing, the car breaks down, or to cover living expenses if you suffer a temporary loss of income. How much you need in your emergency fund depends on your circumstances. You should set aside at least three months of your net income for emergency use. Remember to keep your emergency cash fund separate from your main transaction account. If you keep savings in your transaction account, they will soon disappear in everyday expenses. Open a separate high interest rate internet account and direct a small amount of money each payday into the account. Once it has built to the desired level, you can either leave it in a high rate account or transfer it to a bank term deposit and keep rolling it over at the end of each term. Number two, use separate accounts for savings goals. Once an emergency cash fund is set up and growing, the next step is to set up a separate high interest rate savings account for each specific savings goal, such as a house deposit, new car, holiday, or Christmas presents. Each account should be separate and named after the purpose of the account. For example, you might call your house deposit account the John House Deposit Account. This will help you resist the temptation to access the account to pay for everyday items, motivating you to put more money into it whenever possible. Having separate savings accounts for specific goals means you have the cash ready when needed and don't need to go into debt to buy the items. Moreover, setting up the accounts also helps you consider what is important to you and worth saving for. You can contribute to the savings accounts from your pay. Most employers are happy to split salaries into separate accounts. This way, the money doesn't sit in your transaction account where it can readily be spent. Most high interest rate internet accounts come with various access options, such as ATM, internet, and card access. The best way to save money is to cut off all possible means of access. Before we see the third strategy, kindly support my work by liking the video and subscribing if you are new. That said and done, let's proceed. Number three, go for a 10 to 15% discount on your first home if you are a renter. Here's a way of turning dead rent money into your own home, keeping the purchase price low, and minimizing the size of your mortgage. If you like the place you have been renting and want to stay in the same area, ask the owner if you can take over the mortgage and buy the house from them. Do your homework to find out the home's actual value and then offer them, say, 10 to 15% less than the home's value. The owner might want to sell and be happy to sell quickly to someone they know and trust rather than face the uncertainty and time delays of trying to sell it on the open market. In addition, they save on selling costs such as agents, commission, and advertising, which can be up to 5% of the price, and they don't miss out on rent if you were to vacate while they try to sell. For an owner, getting 10% less than the market value on a simple, quick, clean sale with no selling costs and no vacancy period can be an attractive option. This approach results in you obtaining an instant credit rating, a discount on the purchase price, lower upfront loan fees, and a smaller mortgage than you would otherwise have. You've just turned dead rent money into your home and you don't have to move. The owner can give you a credit reference if you have made regular rent payments with no arrears. Go to the owner's existing lender. They will already have the security documentation on file, so you save money on upfront fees. It is a new loan in your name, but you're making it easy for the lender to approve it. When buying from your landlord, always make sure you buy the house by signing a transfer and that you borrow from a recognized bank, building society, or credit union. 
Don't be lured into a vendor finance agreement where you only receive the title after the last payment. There are lots of shady vendor finance schemes around that should be avoided at all costs. In all cases, get proper advice from a lawyer you choose, not one recommended by the landlord or mortgage broker. Lastly, number four, be careful when guaranteeing other people's debts. Generally, if you share the benefits and control of an asset, it is okay to borrow jointly or guarantee someone else's debt. For example, spouses or partners buying a house to live in together or a business they jointly control and operate. However, problems usually begin when one party guarantees business debts of the partner or family member where the guarantor has no input or control in the business. For example, people guaranteeing the business debts of adult children or grandchildren. That said, most first-time business owners need a guarantor to guarantee their bank loans while they build their credit rating. These new business ventures are always extremely risky, and the probability of guarantors losing their money is very high. If you are requested to be a guarantor for a bank loan involving a new business venture, always put a dollar limit on your guarantee and make sure it is set out in the guarantee document you sign. If the borrower borrows $100,000, Limit your guarantee to the same amount so you are not liable for any more if the borrower runs up huge debts. Never sign a guarantee without obtaining legal advice from your lawyer. Never use the same lawyer used or recommended by the borrower or lender. A few hundred dollars spent on a lawyer could save you hundreds of thousands of dollars later. If you have guaranteed somebody else's debt, now might be a good time to review the relationship. Since they took out the loan, they should have built up their own credit rating and credit history, so the lender should be happy for you to remove the guarantee and let the borrower stand on their own two feet. If the lender is willing to drop your guarantee, but will charge the borrower a higher interest rate on their loan, you need to make the borrower aware of the value of your contract. If you continue with the guarantee, you should charge the borrower the difference in interest rates as a guarantee fee. The lender's higher interest means the lender is adding an extra margin for the additional risk of the borrower. You are taking this risk, so you need to be compensated for it by charging the borrower. If the lender won't let you drop the guarantee because the borrower has a poor payment history during the guarantee period, this should ring alarm bells. You are running a real risk of the borrower defaulting and being called on to cough up the money to pay the debt. If you don't, have the spare cash ready to pay, it is time for the borrower to make arrangements to pay out the debt. Nobody becomes wealthy overnight. But with these four strategies you've learned in this video, you can build wealth quicker than you imagined. That said, thanks for watching. Feel free to share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Till next time, bye.